Welcome everyone. Today we're going to go over DR SAR Desai's Chapter 24, Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei. Hello, I'm Professor Bond and I'm helping you guide you through this chapter. Today's learning objectives is to learn about the basic history of Malaysia, learn about the basic history of Singapore, and learn about facts and basic history of Brunei. Malaysia, a beautiful large country. There's Malaysia's flag. Does it remind you of any flag that you know of? Chapter 24, Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei. Malaysia is a former British colony. It declared independence in 1957. Its population is around 50% ethnic Malay, and then a minority of ethnic Chinese, ethnic Indian, in, and some indigenous. The religion is Islam. Now this chapter goes over how President Tunku Abdul Rahman, 1957 to 70, very much steered Malaysia into modern waters. He was an anti-communist. He tried, it was very difficult to rule Malaysia because of the varied economic status of the different groups. He tried to balance the economic politics of the working class Malays and the wealthy Chinese. So in Malaysia, they had a long colonization from Britain. And what happened was ethnic Malays lagged behind Chinese in education, jobs, and class, economic class. So there was a quote, economic hierarchy. Ethnic Malays were not exploited from colonizers, but did not really benefit from um, the, the British colonizers. Now the Malay rulers became very wealthy though, a small group. The Chinese descendants, they are all, uh, the Chinese community in Malaysia were actually descendants of the 19th century laborers who advanced in, uh, in uh, commerce. So they actually, they were descended from the laborers, but during, after, during and after the colonization, they very much uh, improved, a quote unquote, jumped in commerce, education, and civil service. And they're mostly located in the cities. Now, ethnic Malays mostly lived in the countryside as fishermen and farmers and maintained their economic status of working class uh, individuals. Now, the Indians are also descended from the laborers of rubber laborers, and they sort of have a, a middle economic status in Malaysia. So they're not wealthy, uh, elite, such as the Chinese, but they're not uh, working class or um, underprivileged like the Malay, um, ethnic Malays. Now this actually came to a, a huge abruption, which came to a race riot and uh, still, uh, still grappling with that to this day. Now in 1969, there was a race riot, um, terrible, terrible time. So there's a lot of uh, resentment among the Malay, right? They're the majority, um, over 50%. Uh, there's M Malays and, um, resentment over the Indian and the Chinese who do better economically. And what happened was um, there was an election and uh, a large number of Alliance members of the National Assembly, actually uh, the membership was turned over and this um, membership, uh, usually representing Chinese urban areas was overturned and ethnic Malays became the kind of power brokers. Um, and this really angered a lot of the Chinese Indians. And as a result, in 1969, unfortunately, and you could probably YouTube this, there was explosive riots that happened and over 2,000 lives lost, mostly Chinese. And the facts are still going on. People still talk about it. It's called the Malaysian Bloody Riots of May 13th, 1969. Very terrible time. 2,000 lives is a lot of people. Now today, Malaysia is currently a greatly improving economy, a wonderful place to visit. I highly recommend you do that. It's a rota rotating mo monarchy system in which nine ethnic Malay state rulers rule as king for five-year terms. Now, Singapore actually used to be part of Malaysia. It was, uh, they, they found that it was just too many Chinese, their economy too well. So later on, you'll find that uh, Singapore kind of gets kicked out of Malaysia. Singapore. 
Now, if anyone's seen the, the film Crazy Rich Asians, you'll know that uh, it's a very wealthy place. It's one of the most wealthy uh, countries in the planet. Uh, it's where the setting of the movie Crazy Rich Asians was uh, to kind of show how some Asians, particularly ethnic Chinese, are doing very well in certain Southeast Asian countries. Now, Singapore, no doubt, unquestionably, is a success story. It has a very well-integrated ethnic group, some Malay, Indian, Chinese, and some Eurasians. Now, they have actually something very unique in that they have actually housing that's equal, which means there's no ghettos in, in, in Singapore. It's actually very equal. Everyone has very nice uh, middle range, uh, wonderful apartments that's provided by the government. And so that is quite different from most countries on the, in the world. And there's a good part and bad part. But in Singapore, they're all good parts. Now, that has largely to do with its wonderful founding father, which is Lee Kuan Yew. Now, everyone in Singapore loves Lee Kuan Yew. Uh, he is the first prime minister of Singapore from 1959 to 1990. He's a founding father. He transformed this third world country, quote unquote, back then, right? It was part of the state of Malaysia that got kicked out to a first world country, right? No doubt it is actually uh, something that uh, the world actually uh, uh, very much admires. Now, Lee Kuan Yew was not uh, uh, ethnocentric. He believed that all different uh, cultures and all different languages were important. And thus you'll see that the national languages are multiple languages. Everyone in Singapore has to learn English, uh, Indian language, uh, as well as Mandarin. So again, it's like a tri-language place. And so that he emphasized and embraced plural nature of ethnic uh, cult, uh, groups. And that was very impressive of him. Now, Singapore began uh, when it was ousted or take or cut off from uh, uh, the ouster of Singapore began in 1965. Uh, remember, it was part of Malaysia, but they kicked it out because it was primarily Chinese and it was going to give too much of a, 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 a population preference to that group. Um, it actually functioned as a separate state. It's essentially a big island, and it's 75% ethnically Chinese, 14% uh, Malay, 9% Indian. One could say that it's a bit of a, a, a nanny state and that the government does a lot for you and makes sure that everyone is doing well. Now, Singapore also is very safe. It has an extremely high standard of living. Sometimes Singapore has come, I, I imagine when they come to other countries, they're aghast by how dirty it is. Uh, it's considered an economic miracle uh, in finance and business. Definitely a country of globalization. It cannot survive without globalization. Uh, it doesn't have too many natural products. It gets most of its food from Malaysia uh, and uh, its agriculture uh, and through trade. Its government is su it has subsidized housing. So if you um, are not doing as well economically, you can get subsidized housing. The government also provides telephone, electricity, radio, and television. Now, it was ranked the second most competitive country in terms of economics. It's also, its economy depends on finance and travel. There's very low unemployment, and that's because it has a nanny state. It takes care of everyone in the nation, uh, country. The economy is entrepot trade, and it, tra it changed to finance and banking. So, you know, there's like discussions around the world. Should we close the economy? Should we just have our own? That would be the opposite of Singapore. It, it relies on a globalized economy, and that's how it's actually risen and had its upper uh, one could say upper middle um, status as a country around the world. Now, Singapore has some fun no-nos. Uh, it depends on where you're at. But Singapore, you're not allowed drugs and uh, you would get arrested. Uh, and also, you're not allowed to not flush the toilet. Uh, you have to flush the toilet. You're, there's also no, uh, they don't allow bubble gum because again, it's a very, very clean country. So like they want to keep it clean, okay? And so they have these rules that I think other countries might find interesting. And lastly, we have Brunei. Now, Brunei is a, was a British electorate and it became independent in 1984. So relatively a young country and a tiny country like Singapore, very tiny, yet also very wealthy. So it's 2,226 square miles. Its population is 428,963,000 in 2018. 
Its, its population is two-third Malay, Filipinos, Thais, Chinese. And again, it's very difficult, nearly impossible to get Brunei citizenship. Uh, you'd have to be there living there. I, I think I read last time 25 years and sometimes even longer to even be considered for citizenship. So again, and they, they make you take a, a, a Malay test in that language and then you have to identify its native plant. So again, very, very difficult to get um, citizenship. So it's a very wealthy, oil-rich country, and it remains uh, to be that to this day. It's an Islamic monarchy under the Sultan. So you can see how it's very uh, influenced by India and actually even Philippines and Thailand and its surrounding countries of Malaysia and Singapore. Uh, and you can see it in its food and even its name, Brunei, it's in Sanskrit um, from Indian uh, languages. It has a combo kind of English common law and Share a law. Please look that up. And its language is Malay and English, and various languages. Um, Malay is an official language, but um, they do also teach English as well. Uh, but also, you know, a lot of people speak Chinese and other languages as well. Now, the, the population is very mixed historically just because it has been a kind of like a trading um, spot where a lot of people have gone through. For instance, when the Spanish were taking over the Philippines, they would go through Brunei. And so that's why that you see so many uh, Filipinos there. And, and consequently, uh, a lot of, because the Spanish made uh, Mexico, um, Philippines, and Latin America as a kind of a, a try, uh, or <clears throat> even with Spain, a quad trading kind of um, kind of quad, as you say, a lot of people actually in the population are quite mixed, even some from Mexico and the Philippines. So there's no alcohol allowed in, uh, in Brunei. There's no extramarital sex. Uh, there's no al al allowing of homosexuality and drugs. And it's, uh, again, uh, you know, you can have very severe uh, consequences if you uh, do those things. And it's a very wealthy country. So your learning outcomes today is you learn about the basic history of Malaysia, you learn the basic history of uh, Singapore, and now you learn the basic history of Brunei. If you have any questions, please email me.